Marco Codes. Hey folks, Marco here. Let me show you why JUnit's dynamic tests are so good. See, I had a problem. Remember, I'm still building my Google Photos clone. It's just going to take me 10 more years to finish it. And what I have so far, you can see I have a website where the two sole pictures I've ever taken in my life are displayed. And what I managed to do is extract the date out of the image, right? Saturday, 2023, a Sunday in 2020, and also extract the location, the GPS coordinates, and turn them into a string. Now, what I did for that is I had to have a look at the image metadata, extract all the values. So we have date, we have location, we also have width and height, and uh, many more things, actually. The problem being I had no real clue about image metadata. So what I did is I googled around, I found a library called Metadata Extractor, a Java library by the great Drew Noakes, and I actually had a chat with Drew who explained me for half an hour or an hour how all of this works in the image metadata universe, so to speak. Shout out to him, super cool guy, check out the library, it's a super interesting story uh, with that library that has been created over 11 years ago, right? And when you scroll down here on the image metadata extractor page, you'll find a sentence which says, the library understands several forms of metadata, many of which may be present in a single image. See, image metadata is essentially a can of worms. When you open up EXIF, right, the exchangeable image file format, what you'll find is, the initial draft, it was the initial specification, came out 28 years ago. And you can read hundreds and hundreds of pages how EXIF works. And essentially it's key value pairs or dictionaries. And you'll have to find the right key value pair to extract, you know, the correct metadata that you want. But the problem is I don't have like months to read up on just EXIF and then all the other formats as well. I have like 20 minutes here in this video to get something up and running. So I had to and have to take some shortcuts. Let me quickly show you what I already implemented and how all of this comes together with dynamic tests in the end. Okay, so back in my project, I have a method which is called getDimensions and I feed it with the metadata object that Drew's library gives me. And the problem is you need to really understand what you're looking for and where to look for it. So for example, what I'm trying to do here is I have the metadata, so maybe hundreds or thousands of key value pairs. And then first of all, I'm trying to get specific key value pairs, which are the so-called EXIF IFD0 directory. Don't ask me what, what it is, right? You'll have to read up on it. And if that directory doesn't exist, these key value pairs don't exist. Then I'm checking, hey, is that maybe, is there a PNG directory because it's a PNG file? And if that doesn't exist, I'm checking, hey, is it a JPEG directory? And could I get maybe some specific JPEG, you know, uh, key value pairs that give me the width and the height? It is super ugly code, right? Same for creation time, where I'm checking a specific exif sub if directory and then another directory and then a GPS directory. The problem being is, I don't know what the perfect implementation is going to look like because as written on the page, the problem is it could be that you get five different dates, like creation dates when the picture was taken, in the same metadata file. And I had no idea which directory to pick, which one is, has priority. In short, I was lost. So what does a good lazy programmer do? Well, let me show you. I went to my source test resources folder and what I did there is I took three images. Uh, this one I got off the internet uh, somewhere. This one is, I think, a picture I took on my trip to Uganda. And here's a picture I think I took uh, at Munich Airport some time ago. So I took these three images, right? Some have GPS location, so, but the Uganda picture, for example, doesn't have a GPS location. And I wanted to know, hey, what do the Windows developers actually display as the proper creation date and the proper GPS location? So I open up good old Windows Explorer, right? And I just picked one of these images. And here in the details section, when I just look at the properties that Windows displays me, I can see well, Windows says the origin is sometime in 2022 at 10.30, right? With a specific program name, whatever. When I go down, scroll down, I see width and height, right? That's good. And I can even see the camera model, Pixel 4a here, for example. And when I scroll down even more, I can see the GPS locations. So uh, in case you're not aware, degrees, second, uh, sorry, degrees, minutes, seconds, right? And 
I just made the shortcut saying that whatever Windows displays here, the date taken, is the correct date taken because Windows developers hopefully thought a bit about which tag, which metadata tag in the image file uh, has preference. Now, having settled for this, it's now actually very powerful to use dynamic tests to let JUnit create a specific test case for every image I put into my source test resources folder and see if my Google Photos clone can handle it properly, meaning extract the same values as Windows does. Let's see how that works. Okay, back in my project. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and it has the same name as the image, just with the JSON extension, like so. And I'm gonna add the image metadata that Windows uh, shows me in the properties uh, dialog window, like width 640, 480, well, then latitude uh, 4328 and 5.68, uh, and the specific date. Now, just a tiny quick caveat. The thing is, Windows here actually drops the seconds uh, from the date and time that, that the picture was taken. So that's why you'll only see, you know, hours and minutes here, 1646. And uh, as for um, the latitude, the degrees, minutes and seconds, the thing is I had to play with Drew's library and Drew actually rounds the seconds, right? So that's why you here in Windows, you'll see uh, 4328 5.675999, whereas I know that my library gives me 5.68, right? Same with the longitude. But other than that, I just literally took the data that the dialog window showed me and put it into a text file here. And actually, I'm just going to quickly, uh, I'm going to do something. I'm just going to put it to 479. I'm going to give you the right, wrong height so I can see that the tests I'm going to create in a second are actually going to spectacularly fail. Now, let me just quickly add the other two JSON files for the other two pictures. Right, that was quick. So you can see here is a JSON file. Um, it has only width and height and no latitude, no longitude because the GPS coordinates are missing from the metadata. And the last picture again has latitude or is supposed to have a latitude and longitude. At least Windows displays me uh, these values. Right, now it's finally time to, well, get rid of our Google Photos clone application tests and actually write our first real cool media test. Because as I said, what I wanna do is now for every one of these pairs, I want to automatically create a test case. That also means whenever I get a new picture from a new mobile phone, a new camera, or someone sends in a pull request with an image where they tried out my Google Photos clone and it wasn't working properly, they can simply add that file to the folder. I don't have to change any code whatsoever, just the image plus the JSON file is enough to figure out if my project can handle um, the image correctly or not. Right, so before, by the way, I'm gonna start writing my um, media test, I'm just gonna quickly create a record and I'm gonna call it test metadata, right? Because I need a Java representation um, for my JSON files. So exactly, I have width, height, date, latitude, longitude here, and I'm just gonna convert these JSON files to test metadata records so I can easily uh, do assertions against them in a second. Back in my media test class, what I want to do is, um, it's not a Spring Boot test, right? It's just a plain Java test. Hence, I need to configure just quickly an object mapper for me uh, that will, a Jackson object mapper, which will allow me to turn these JSON files into, you know, the, the test metadata ob objects you just saw. And then um, the heart and the core of this is, what I want to do is I want to have a method which returns JUnit dynamic tests, right? It's just a list or a collection of tests. So I'm just gonna call it new media tests, like so. And in JUnit speak, you also need to have an annotation, the test factory annotation to tell JUnit, hey, have a look at this specific method because it's gonna create funky hundreds of test methods, right? Now, what you'll need to do is you'll need to return, for example, list of uh, dynamic tests. And the way you do that is you have a helper method where you specify the test name that you'll see at the bottom of IntelliJ IDEA, for example, when you run the tests, and an executable. So that is essentially where you say assert that true is true, for example, something like that. Let me just import the right class. And that's it. Right. Now, 
obviously we don't want to you know return a specific hard-coded list with just one test instead what we want to do is we want to scan our class path get all the images here under source test resources and for every image that we found um, create a new test method and the class path scanning, you can do it manually, but it's a bit ugly. And what I actually did is I took the help of a library, which is called uh, class graph, right? Which lets you, for example, easily uh, scan uh, your entire class path. And I'm just gonna paste in the scaffolding here, right? So what uh, I'm doing here is I'm telling class graph, hey, please scan my um, class path. I'm getting confused here now. And then from all the files you found, please give me back every file that starts with image dash, right? It's just a convention I took. And then JPEG here at the end. Now, um, I need to, you know, improve that a tiny bit. At the moment, I can just, you know, parse in JPEGs. And maybe I should just, you know, start uh, finding adjacent files and then take the, the, the corresponding image file, whatever, whichever extension it has. But I'm just quickly hacking things together here now in uh, 15 minutes or so. In any case, uh, that line here should give me a list of images, JPEG images, under my source test resources class path. Now, what I'm going to do is, instead of returning here a fixed list of whatever tests, I'm actually going to go return images map. I need to turn my list of image names into dynamic tests. And the way I'm going to do that is, so for every image, I'm just going to call dynamic test with the image name as the test name, which is going to be super cool. You'll see that in a second. And actually, let me just, you know, um, actually, let me just try that again. Assert true is true so that you can see the code in action. Let me see what's missing. I need to turn that into a list, right? Now let's try and run this and let's see if I already get three test cases automatically created for me, which would, oh, look at that. I can see here's a test case, here's a test case, a third test case for my three images. Super, super cool. And they all passed already. It looks like I don't have to implement anything anymore. Right, no, uh, that unfortunately wasn't quite right because what we need to do is a couple of things. We need to figure out, first of all, are the dimensions correct, right? Second, we need to figure out um, what else do we have? Uh, the creation time, is that correct? And third, we need to figure out is the location correct? And for that, we need a tiny bit more plumbing and I'll just paste them some code here, which I already prepared. So we get the image name and the image name is, for example, image dash DSCN whatever dot JPEG. In fact, we want just to get the file name without the extension. That's why I'll just do a quick substring here until I find the first dot in my file name, which gives me the file name. And then I'll just open up the JSON file directly with uh, taking the file name plus dot JSON. And I'm turning that input stream I get here, the JSON file input stream, into my wanted test metadata uh, record that we just created, right? So in here, we just read in the JSON file, that's it, a couple of lines of plumbing. And then just in a second, what I also need to do is I need to get the actual metadata, right? I need to call Drew's library to, to, to give me the actual image metadata. And then what I can do is I can call, you know, one of the, the methods I wrote, for example, get dimensions with the actual metadata. So actually, let me just put that in here. Good. Now actual metadata, which gives me the dimensions. And then I'm just going to write that assert that dimensions dot height, for example, is equal to expected metadata dot height, right? We're going to do the same thing for width. And we're just going to expect that the actual dimensions are equal to the expected dimensions. That's all there is to it. Now, the problem is actual metadata is null. Where do we get the actual metadata from? And unfortunately, let me just replace th those calls here. Uh, it's again a bit ugly because uh, I don't want to waste too much time on that. On that is what I'm trying to do is I have my resource, right? So I'm just getting a reference to my source test resource in my image file here, but I need to have a file reference or slash a path reference, right? So with this ugly call here, I'm somehow turning the resource into a URI, into a path, and then I can actually turn that path and feed that path into my image metadata reader, 
Right. There would also be the option of just feeding in an input stream, uh, which doesn't work uh, for other reasons. We need a file reference, unfortunately, which I'll tell you if you write a comment down below here in the video. All right. Now that we have that, actually, let me just run our tests and see if this is already working. It looks like test ran. And for the other two pictures, the test is green, which supposedly is super cool because that means it worked. For our first picture, we get expected 479, but was 480. Now, the funny thing is, this is just some tiny professionalism. Uh, I sometimes hate these assertions where, not just sometimes, always hate, where you don't know what was being asserted. And then you can scroll down the log and then, you know, find the right line and you'll find, ah, it's ex exactly on that line. Hence, what I try to do usually, going the extra mile, I'll just go, hey, this as image height and then as image width, like so. And then when I rerun the tests, then I'll see that hopefully when the test fails, I see, ah, right, it's the image height. Expected 479, but was 480. But the good thing about it is that actually everything is should be good because we changed the image height early on, you know, from something else. So let's put it to 480. And then hopefully, yes, everything already works as expected. The tests are fine. And already, you know, my the, all the code I wrote so far, at least for the dimension extraction, uh, is streamlined to what Windows actually extract from the metadata, at least for these three images. Now I need to do the same thing for uh, the creation time. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly call uh, get creation time, right? Uh, that's a method I wrote. You can have a look at the code on, on GitHub. Uh, again, I'm just writing an assertion. And what I'm doing is because in the metadata, you'll actually find, you know, seconds um, and milliseconds, maybe even, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I'm just going to call is equal to ignoring seconds because I know that Windows ignores the seconds and in my JSON files, I also, you know, put the values uh, without seconds. And then last but not least, location. Um, usually, uh, if else's in test methods aren't too great, but especially with dynamic tests, sometimes you need them because sometimes I don't have GPS coordinates in my image metadata. And then I just want to assert that, you know, my actual location is actually null, right? Um, it would be kind of crazy if uh, then some random location popped up. Otherwise, I want to make sure that the location is the same that I specified in my JSON file. And here, by the way, again, let me just quickly add an as. Uh, the image uh, degrees, minutes, seconds, uh, right, is equal to. And just to show you that it hopefully works, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the date here on one image. And I'm going to change the, the minutes here also on another image. I'm just going to rerun my tests. And then let's see what actually is going to happen. Um, hopefully, I still, yes, one image was fine. The other image, you can see that right here is I'm expecting 31, um, but it was 30. And um, here, I can also see that, that the minutes here were off. So actually, the code I wrote is still working as expected. Now I'll just have to put it back to a working value. And the beauty of this now is that I don't have to worry about if, as I mentioned before, if anyone comes, even myself, with new images, with new image formats, I can just drop them in here, put in the JSON file, the values that I expect. And then I'll find out if my implementation is broken. I quickly have to add, you know, new methods to these. Let me just quickly show you again to these uh, crazy image metadata extraction methods. But at least I'm pretty sure if an image is supported or if it isn't supported without me having to boot up my whole Google Photos clone, checking stuff manually and all that sort of stuff. Now it's very simple, very fast feedback loop. Uh, and I'm just happy with it. All right, that's it. What you can do now is maybe create a pull request with one of your images, and then we'll find out if my Google Photos clone actually already properly supports its metadata format. Hint, probably not. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Sayonara.